Hello, my name is Ashley Freeman, and I am currently a PhD candidate at the Norwegian University of Science and Technology. Today, on behalf of myself and my co-authors, Dr. Wan and Dr. Bertelin, I will discuss a study we are performing here in the engineering department that focuses on the mechanical characterization of proteinaceous films using indentation. Gelatin-based adhesives have been used for centuries by artists, and as the deterioration and damage of art objects are related to the chemical and mechanical properties of the materials of which they are made, we must develop a better understanding of these properties to safeguard works of art. Generally, if sampling is allowed, some millimeter size samples are taken for chemical analysis. However, more recently, with the use of nano indentation, mechanical features have been directly exploited from some millimeter size samples taken from works of art. Instead of employing the conventional method, which typically consists of tensile testing performed on macro size mock ups made to mimic the chemical and physical behavior of historic artist materials. Nonetheless, when preparing for indentation tests, a set of empirical rules are followed, uh, increasing the validity of the obtained results. These rules stress the importance of sample preparation and parameter selection. For submillimeter size samples, uh, selecting appropriate spaced indents that maximize the testing area while avoiding interference for sharp tipped indenters is essential. This work focuses on the process of selecting optimal indent separation for proteinaceous adhesives derived from the bones of a cow. Here, a range of distances with two different orientations are evaluated on mock-ups, allowing for us to examine the relationship between indentation spacing and the obtained material properties. This first step of testing mock-ups is essential, as it assists in developing a comprehensive measuring procedure, which takes into consideration the dimensional restrictions of historic materials. First, I will start by giving a brief introduction on our motivations to study these types of materials. Then I will explain how our materials were prepared, after which I will discuss our methodology, which investigates the spacing between sequential or adjacent indents. Following this, I will then go on to show you some of our results. And lastly, I will conclude this presentation by mentioning some of our future works. Gelatin is a biopolymer which has found many applications in numerous industries ranging from the pharmaceutical industry to conservation and artist materials. Although its exact emergence is unknown, the use of gelatin-based adhesives or animal glue is often dated back to ancient Egypt. Since then, the use of animal glue as the binding media of paints or even as an adhesive to re-adhere paint to its support has become common practice. However, historic paints or consolidants composed of these types of biopolymers can deteriorate with time. Consequently, understanding their mechanical behavior and properties is essential for ensuring the safety and integrity of artworks containing these proteinaceous materials. Here, we focus on a gelatin-based adhesive film, which was prepared from the bones of a cow. Although commercial gelatin can be produced from other sources, such as the hide of an animal, as well as byproducts from fish. Typically, these raw materials go through some type of hydrolysis, in which the extracted material is eventually dried and is what we refer to as gelatin. For the samples prepared in this study, um, we used commercial gelatin that was then soaked in water and heated as instructed by the manufacturer. We then casted this material and allowed it to dry. The gelatin-based adhesive films were allowed to cure in ambient conditions for at least 275 days, after which rectangular specimen were cut from the middle of these films and adhered to metal substrates, as shown here in this didactic. After the specimen were firmly mounted on the metal substrates, they were subjected to indentation tests under a max load of 10 millinewtons using load control mode. Here we use the Oliver and Farr method uh, to evaluate indentation hardness and reduced modulus. Also, one of the typical load displacement curves um, recorded during this test, you can see in the lower right hand of the slide. Although for the purpose of this presentation, we will only be showing hardness values. Hardness here is calculated using the max load and the projected area. In particular, we're interested in examining the effect that spacing has on these parameters. To accomplish this, we performed indents with varying spacing in two different testing orientations, as imaged here. The first testing orientation was performed with indents that were equally spaced in the X or Y direction, 
so as rows or as columns. Here, the spacing ranged from 3 microns to 35 microns. The second testing orientation we performed was a 3 by 3 array. For the array, we used spacing ranging from 6 to 35 microns. It should be noted that there are standards and guidelines that suggest how to determine your spacing when carrying out indentation tests. Additionally, there are a few groups out there that have studied materials such as few silica and polycarbonate along with polystyrene um, to determine their spacing. We will do something very similar herein. Here, the X and Y data has been separated into two plots. The left plot contains the data from the X direction testing, whereas the plot on the right hand side shows data calculated from the Y direction testing. Just to reiterate, our tests consist of three sequential indents that were spaced equally, um, which are shown here as the black, red, and blue curves, respectively. Additionally, we performed these tests three times in both the X and Y directions, uh, which is why the left plot and right plot actually contain three sets of tests, the top, the middle, and the bottom. And what we're interested in uh, is the hardness value and how spacing is affecting these obtained results. So with all of that in mind, uh, we can take a bit of a deeper look at these two different plots. So here, the y-axis is our hardness values, whereas the x-axis is a normalized value of spacing divided by h max, or by the maximum depth of that particular indent. What we hope to see from these curves is a convergence of the data at some normalized spacing. So that means that indent 1, 2, and 3, or the black, red, and blue curves, should begin to converge at a certain spacing. Here, when comparing all of the tests that we have done, regardless of the direction of testing in the X or Y direction, the data suggests that the hardness values begin to converge or stabilize at a normalized spacing greater than 10, um, which is actually 10 times the indentation depth um, that was tested here. In addition, we performed tests in a three by three array with the results presented here. It can be observed from these box and Whistaker plots that the deviation in hardness becomes less at a spacing greater than nine microns. This is evident when examining the mean values along with the overall scatter of the data. Here, the mean values are represented as small squares within each box plot, while the scatter can be shown next to the box plots on the left. When comparing the results that were obtained at a spacing of six microns or the black box plots with the latter three, they're obtained at nine, 14, and 35, which are the red, blue, and yellow box plots respectively. You can see that not only does the scatter of the data become less, but also the mean values become more comparable. In conclusion, we found that an indentation spacing, which is greater than 10 times the indentation depth, is appropriate for these proteinaceous materials. Our findings correspond with other research groups who have performed indentation spacing studies on different types of materials, including fusilica polycarbonate and polystyrene. As mentioned at the beginning of this presentation, gelatin can be sourced from different types of animals as well as fish. So currently we are developing a comparative study which also examines the spacing effect on three additional gelatin-based films that were prepared from the skin of a rabbit, the height of a cow, and the swim bladder of a fish. These materials, like the gelatin-based films presented here, which were made from bones of a cow, are also used by artists uh, as well as conservators. And lastly, I would like to thank you for your time and your attention.